Welcome to the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival presented by Visual Communications. My name is Mia Barnett and I'm a programmer for the festival and I'm zooming in tonight from Los Angeles, uh, the home of the Tongva people. And uh, we'd like to thank everyone who made this festival possible, especially the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Sony Pictures Entertainment, Comcast, NBC Universal, California Arts Council, SAG-AFTRA, Producers Industry, Advancement and Cooperative Fund, the National Endowment for the Arts, and HBO and Warner Media. And a special thank you to all of our community partner organizations for their valuable work and uh, their continued support of visual communications. We'd especially like to thank our friends at VALA, Vietnamese American Arts and Letters Association. So now we're going to start our artist conversation, and I would love to welcome Trin Din Le Min, the director of Goodbye Mother. Hi, Hi Min, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for this uh, recording session. Yeah. Yes, of course. We're so happy to have you. Um, so I, I just wanted to uh, remind our, our viewers at home um, what this film is about in case um, they want a quick refresher. So um, the little synopsis is that uh, Van returns home to Vietnam from America with his boyfriend, Ian, um, who his conservative family believes is just a friend. Van struggles with how to come out to his dysfunctional yet loving family without losing them, and particularly his mother. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to jump right in and um, ask you what uh, connected you to this story and um, why you wanted to tell this story. Yeah, so you know that this is actually my uh, future debut, so it's extremely important. So like when the writer like approached me and asked me, okay, so I, uh, they, they think that this is maybe the project that suits me so much. When I read the story, I just feel like I deeply connected to the team of family, especially like how like uh, personal choice uh, versus like uh, expectation from family especially it also happened in Vietnam here when they really value like the traditions of like being like together in a big family. So like that's why I feel like this is the project uh, that I had to direct and I had to make it into my first uh, feature debut. That's so great. And I, I wanted to say that um, I as a, a queer viewer really connected with this film and I think a lot of LGBTQ viewers out there um, can find a lot of similar threads to their own coming out story. I think especially children of um, immigrants or children of, you know, their, their parents grew up in a totally different culture than they're in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I was wondering if you, if you had, um, if that was something you had in mind it, with how this was going to connect to maybe international audiences too. Yeah, when I read the story, I think like we all say like, just like the, we all have family and then we all have like our partners, wife, husband, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, and then we have our, our personal life. But like we, sometimes we have to put that into like a bigger picture, a picture umbrella of a bigger family as well. So like, I think like this is going to touch like um, international audience as well. Because I think like this is just like, a universe, universal team that we all share together. And uh, for me, it's also this story is both like universal, but also really personal as well. Because I, I myself also like saw a lot of and have been seeing a lot of problems in my own family as well. So like that's why and also like I also have like, a relationship with my mom is kind of like the guy. Uh, the main character, the protagonist in the film as well. So that's why this film also like really personal because like, we also like sometimes like have to confide, have to share our secret to our family, to our mom, to our parents in that way. So like that's why I feel like I'm totally like touched by this story. Yeah. I, I think I really felt your personal connection to it. I think while watching it, it just, it felt so authentic and I think um, you know, that's in large part to your direction, but then also um, the actors did a wonderful job in this. I think the acting really stood out to me. Um, 
I think in particular, I loved the grandmother. She was so funny. She had such like intimate and emotional scenes as well. And um, I wanted to ask you how you went about casting her role. Mm. So when I first read the, the character in the script, I was totally surprised because like, the writer play against like, all of the prejudice uh, again, like all the people, because like, we should, we sometimes like we talk like, like all the people, for example, like our grandparents should be like the most like, conservative, but actually in the film, she is the most like, open to the love of the guys. So um, I'm just like, I think it's a really like, she, the, the writer already play with like, our like, expectation. So when during the casting uh, process, like the actress in the film actually is, is always our first choice, also my first choice as well, because she is like, a veteran and she already like 75 years old, but she always like, she's still really active in the industry. And she, people in Vietnam just say her like, she like the national grandmother, the grandmother of the nation something like that because she's just so adorable and she always is full of energy and then even like when I work with her she's actually like she the one who kind of like calm me down and make me uh, not nervous in some of the situations because that she she sometimes like she act like my own grandmother as well and because you know that I have a lot of challenges and also I have a lot of pressure when directing like a scene with 10 people most of them like like veteran actor actress that must like more experienced than me this is my first time for a feature film so like uh, i didn't feel any pressure because i had the support of her yeah so that's a full like this is just like, a wonderful experience of working together that's so great to hear um i i feel like i can kind of tell her personality through this too um, she just seems like a very like warm and welcoming person. I think um, sort of on the subject of casting, the the mother played by Hong Dao was also a phenomenal casting choice as well. And I think that role was so difficult maybe because she actually didn't have a lot of lines and it was a lot of, you know, her reactions and like, um, you, you just, the, a lot of the story was told on her face. And so um, I wanted to ask you how uh, casting her character went as well. So like one of the interesting thing here is like actually like most of the Vietnamese actresses they don't they didn't prefer that role because they thought like it was so challenging for them because like, in order to play like you said like a role with like mostly like in silence mostly like observing uh, everything else in the home film. And actually see only like show like, we only see like the char character development through her reactions. It's a big challenge for all of the actresses. So they actually, they prefer like the role of the two aunties because like this is that a role with a lot of things to play around and make things funny and to cheer up and also let like, you like tickle people. But for this role, some of the actress, they totally not like in, not their first choice. If they have a choice to choose any role in the film. But uh, when I come up and I approach Hong Dao, actually see Vietnamese American. She's living in Orange County now, just next door to you guys. She loved the role. She used to like, actually she left Vietnam like about 20 years ago. And back then she a uh, drama, she like kind of like, uh, beautiful and well-known actress back then in mostly drama role in stay in theater. But then when she comes to the US, she mostly like play comedian role, that yeah, comedic and comedian. So basically like this is like her come back after like 20 years into like more like a serious like drama role. So like we both like took the challenge myself as the first time director also and she uh, as a comeback for herself. So like, I think like, and also like one of the good, good thing about her is like she also like a type of really supportive and always like listening to me, to my uh, artistic and directing choices for her role. So like, it's also a really great like collaboration. Yeah. Sounds like you really built a really phenomenal team for uh, this film. And that, that's great to hear. Um, 
I wanted to bring up the ending of the film. So if any if anyone out there hasn't seen the film yet, maybe you want to skip forward in this a little bit. But um, I I always am so excited when I am about to watch you know a film with a queer storyline, and I am so excited when there's LGBTQ characters. Um, but more often than not, these films are sad and they have really depressing endings. And it's kind of just something that you're like, oh, again, another sad movie where they can't be together and that's how it ends. But this film is different. And this film, I think, um, maybe you wouldn't call it happy, but it's it's uh, it's hopeful. It's, it's not sad. And um, I really loved that. But then the film is also called Goodbye Mother when um, Van actually has plans to re reunite with his mother. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about um, the title of the film. And I know maybe you are the one to, to choose the title, but um, why is it called Goodbye Mother? If the ending, he's not, he's not really saying goodbye. Yeah. Um, actually, like, um, it's just like, like a routine and a manner, ma manner here in Vietnam that every time when we just uh, had to like go far away, we go always had to say like goodbye, especially we have to say goodbye with a really like kind of like respectful and also like love, loving manner. So goodbye mother in Vietnam, it's just like a, a lie for every single son or daughter to say, to the mom every time, even like when you like was young, we, we had to like go to school. We also say goodbye mom. Uh, even like when we go to work, we say goodbye mom. Uh, we had to uh, leave uh, our hometown to uh, study or to like work in a city. We also say goodbye mom, something like that. So basically it's just like a routine. It's just that like happens uh, again and again for Van when every time he come back home, we had to say goodbye mom again. Okay, so I think it's basically like that. Uh, for me, uh, but uh, uh, at the end, the ending of the film, uh, it actually like when he say goodbye, mom, it means uh, more than like just saying goodbye, but actually uh, it's the time for like, actually they already like understand each other. For me, like understanding and embracing the, the secret of each other is extremely important in every single relationship, especially like husband and wife and mom and dad and daughter and son, something like that. Because I don't think we should like, when we open up and we can like open our secret to our family, it's feel like we more like, we already been like accepted and we feel like we a part of that uh, home forever. I think this is important. So that's why, but also like if you watch like the ending, like you said, like it's, it's happy, but it's also like poignant and it's also like wistful in a way, because I think like now every single people already like find a way to like connect each other and the mom also like find her own like destination and the guys also like find her their own destination, but it doesn't mean they will be like separate they will still be like a whole, like unified, uh, um, the, the unified home, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really loved that final scene in the airport where um, the mother is saying goodbye to Ben and Ian. It was just movie to tears every time I watched it. Um, mm -hmm. But just to, just to shift subjects a little bit, I, I really loved all of the food scenes in this film. So, you know, from the opening credits to the scene around the family dinner table, um, there were so many delicious shots of food and I was just looking at it and like, oh, I need to try that, I, I wanna eat that. Um, why, why did you decide to have so many um, shots of cooking and eating and food in the film? Mm. Uh, for me, like cooking is a uh, such an important part for every single family in over the world. But also, like cooking and eating together is extremely important in uh, Vietnamese and uh, Asian culture as well. Because I think like when we cook for the our beloved uh, families, mean a lot of things. And then I think like during the the dining, we always that uh, is uh, the time that we share most of the story and the, the things about the news about what's happening in our life what's just happened in our school uh, in like our working places 
So like it's a really important time for the whole family to gather together and unify and to talk and to understand. So like it's also like a time when a lot of secret uh, are revealing to each other. So I think like when we sharing food is um, not only about like to to feel our up, but also it's about it's about also like revealing secrets. Yeah. So that's why I always want to involve cooking and uh, dining scene in all of my film. I love that because I I definitely felt like the universality of um, you know breaking bread with each other, eating with your family. But I I like that that's also like the time to share secrets and share share a little more intimately with your loved ones. Um, so I, I understand that Good Bay Mother had a theatrical release in Vietnam, and I was wondering. Um, what the reception was like in Vietnam, maybe especially amongst the older generation or just in general, uh, what did people think of the film? Mm. You mean the reaction of all the people to the film? Yes. So um, I have to say like uh, for Vietnamese people, they pretty open up about like same-sex marriage, uh, LGBT, but it's just become more like sensitive. Is it happen inside their own families because like, every single parents really expect their, uh, their children to have like a more like stable, uh, traditional type of family with like children that you know. So like it's a little bit forbidden just inside the family of the people it's the, the, themselves. So like actually when I screened the film, I saw a lot of positive reaction not only from the younger generation, but also like from older generation as well. Because like when they watch the film, it's not only about how we're going to look at and uh, going to accept or uh, going to understand more about uh, uh, LGBT relationship, but it's also, they also like find a lot of details and connection and uh, uh, relevant to the so big up like being in a park, being a part of a bigger family. Is it going to be like stable or is it going to go up and down with a bunch of, of like of the poiling um, uh, with a lot of dramas with the all of the poiling points like in the film and then it's going to stay uh, stable again. So people like feel related because like, sometimes as you know, a lot of people here in Vietnam, we, we all love our family, but sometimes we feel a lot of pressure when sharing a home together like that, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that there was pretty positive reactions to it, or at least uh, it was well received. Because I think, um, just want to commend you for making this film. Because I think it's you know these kinds of films that push the envelope and help change hearts and minds of people. Because it's it's the same in the U.S. too. Um, even even though I think a lot of people approve of um, marriage equality, it's still pretty new. I think it was um, it became the law the same year um, as it did in Vietnam in 2015. So um, I just I love seeing stories that um, you know is just going to cause society to broaden their minds a little bit and think a little bit deeper um, and be more accepting. So um, I really want to thank you for making the film. And um, I want to thank you for joining us today for this artist conversation. And uh, to everyone out there, don't forget that this film, Goodbye Mother, is viewable now. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. The viewing window closes this Sunday night. And if you enjoyed this conversation and the festival lineup, please consider donating to Visual Communications. Your support will help sustain our year-round operations and programming. And you can go to vcmedia.org for more information. And finally, for the most recent updates on the festival, please visit festival.vcmedia.org or follow us on social media at VC Film Festival. And don't forget to tag LAAPFF2020. Thank you.